Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is going to be another raid Shadow Legends video. So guys, we're doing a follow up to the faction war video I dropped about a week ago, where I went through and I ranked epics, I ranked rares. Uh, there's going to be two more videos in this series. This video is going to be about how to beat the faction war bosses, and then I'm going to do another video where I actually add the legendary champions into my tier list. Um, so if you've not seen my original video, uh, Perhaps watch it after this one. I'll I'll ping it at the end of this video so you can kind of see different epics, different rares that I think fit into different positions in your faction war teams. But this video is going to be about how do you tackle all of the different bosses in the game. So guys, before we get into the boss fights, I just want to talk about what level of champions do you actually need to be able to take down bosses. And bosses are definitely like a, a gear check, uh champion check, that type of thing. But Basically, stage seven. I would say you either need a good level 60 here, or you need uh, probably like three level 50s to comfortably take down a stage seven. Maybe two level 50s if they're decent champs. Um, and other than that, just like food champs can get you through this. So a couple of 50s and um, three, a uh, couple of 50s which are strong, or 160 and like. A couple of 30, 40s will get you through stage 7 as long as they're geared in a, in a decent way. Stage 14 becomes much harder. It's the next kind of real gear check. I'd say you probably need a good two level 60s to get yourself through a stage 14. Um, probably two 60s with two or three 50s to be able to comfortably do 14. And for 21, in most instances, you're going to need at least four 60s and 150 most instances as long as you've got the right blend of champions so it definitely becomes a kind of you know how many champions have you farmed type of dungeon content especially with some of these um, what i'd advise you do is you focus on the teams where you've got the champions that make sense and build up team by team if you can only do stage four in five of the factions for three months that's fine if I if it's me, I'm concentrating on the team that I can actually beat the thing on, uh, do that, and then over time you kind of build up the rest of the teams as you get champions that are worth leveling up. Don't just level up fodder for the sake of trying to do faction wars right now. Level up the teams where you've got your best champions and then move on. Okay, then we're on to the boss. I actually lost one of my champs. I don't really care. That's not really what I'm trying to show you here. So we've got a boss here, the purple void boss. Uh, so the good thing is there's not like an affinity um, watch out here. It's literally just everyone's void. So we've got no worries with that. Um, he's got three abilities and he's got a passive. The passive is just like a normal boss passive. Can't be um, stunned, frozen, all that type of stuff. So you don't need to worry about that. You can manipulate his turn meter. So if you've got any turn meter champs, you can drop his turn meter down. It's really effective on this boss. Um, the turn order in which he does things are, it do his A2, which is called Mirror Universe, uh, as like his primary skill, unless he is low health. If he's low health, he'll actually do a uh, medal with fate and steal somebody's health and top himself right back up. So the main thing you need to be aware of is he will do his A2, Steal your buffs. So right now he's going to steal these shields when he gets his turn. Uh, he's going to transfer any debuffs from himself onto you. Uh, and then he's going to spread them. So he's going to transfer his debuffs onto one person. And then he'll cast debuff spread and spread them to the whole team. So there's a few things you can do to negate this. You can have, uh, you can just manipulate your ability so that you're not putting debuffs on him early. So I will not cast any abilities now which are going to throw more debuffs onto him because they'll come to me. Uh, that's, that's one thing. Second thing is I'm not going to put a ton of buffs on me. Like I've got a buff ability here. I will not use that at this moment in time because I know that he's going to steal my buffs. Um, the other thing you can do is you can come in here with high resistance teams um, and high resistance teams will just resist this skill. So that's quite a good one. Um, and then basically when this goes on cooldown, he'll continuously A1 you, which is a 25% chance of throwing a fear on your team. Um, this fear chance goes up every time he's got an additional buff. So it's really important to not buff yourself up so that he doesn't steal your buffs and then throw them back at you. In terms of order of play with this, what you want to do is you want to kill the two ads. They can't come back. So take your time, kill the two ads, 
Um, then kill him whilst trying to manipulate his turn meter as much as possible, whilst being aware of this A2 steal. When he goes below a quarter health, he will use his A3, which is called Mirror Universe, uh, sorry, Medal with Fates, where he transfers health from one of your team into him. Um, so basically what he does is he, he fills his health up again. This then has a 12 turn cooldown, and you basically then got 12 turns to kill him. So that's, that's the kind of order of play. So if I show this through then, um, all I'm going to do is target the ads. I don't want to buff. I don't want to debuff. I just want to throw my damage in against the ads, let him get his abilities off. Ideally, if you've got stun abilities like this, throwing a stun on the ads is useful. You see the way here, he's stolen my buff. Um, he's thrown decreased speed against me, which was the debuff. And now that's on a three turn cooldown. So all I'm worried about now is fears. So I can buff myself up at this point. I can uh, debuff the enemies. So I'm going to debuff here, decrease defense. I've actually got someone who cleanses these debuffs off. Doom Priest is fantastic for this part of the fight. Um, and in terms of the two ads, you've got one ad which places a leech on you. And you've got the other ad which places a provoke on you. Neither of which are that worrying really. It's just a case of um, try and crowd control the ads whilst you're killing them. Kill them as, as quickly as you can. And then once they're down, you focus all of your effort on the boss. It's actually worth just, just saying again. So we're coming around to his cooldown. So we know his cooldown's coming. I've stopped debuffing him. He's not going to have any debuffs on him. Uh, and I'm trying to run down my own buffs. I do not want to give him a bunch of buffs to make his fear more effective. Got, got rid of one of the ads here. Second ad's uh, crowd controlled. So all he's got at the moment is the option to take this little shield and increase crit, which he's going to do, um, which is just going to improve his fear mechanic slightly. I can go back to buffing my team again, and it's kind of like a rinse and repeat, basically. So throw out a load of poisons here. They're going to die. And then it's rinse and repeat now until I get his health down low. So I'm going to skip on to the point where his health's low, and then I'll show you that part. Okay, so it actually happened a little bit earlier. I took him down to about a third health. He swapped his health with my Doom Priest. So now we've got a 12 turn cooldown here, two turn cooldown here. And basically, I've now got a race. I've got a race to kill him uh, within those 12 turns before he gets his life still back again. All the while managing my own uh, buffs and debuffs to make sure that, um, yeah, just to make sure that I'm not uh, giving him too much of a buff and not uh, hindering myself too hard. So I've come in here, I mean, we've still got like seven full turns before he gets his abilities back. So, you know, totally comfortable on, on timers and that type of thing. Um, and that is that boss done. So let's move on to the next one. And um, there's actually a couple here which I've not done in full. So let's look at the gold boss. Okay then, on to the gold boss. So gold boss is, um, I'd say probably one of the easier bosses in the game. So he's got an A1 which will attack two random enemies. Each hit places provoke. Um, again, like high resistance can, can stop this from landing. Um, once you're provoked, obviously you're attacking him instead of the ads. The main thing you want to do is just try and burn down the ads as quick as you can. Once the ads are down, you're just concentrating on him. You can manipulate his turn meter, so any turn meter manipulation on Gold Boss is great. Uh, he's also got an A2, which is kind of his worst ability, really. Attacks all enemies, places true fear for two turns. That's pretty huge. You kind of want to bring a block debuff in to counteract this. Um, so, I mean, luckily in this setup I've got here, I've got a Duchess who can do exactly that. Uh, and, and again, the tactic here is just to take down the two ads. So I'm crowd controlling the two ads to make sure they're not doing anything untoward. I'm turn me to control in the main boss with my allure here and with my Tanix. So my Tanix is going to throw decreased speed on the boss just to stop him from coming at us. Uh, and then with my main offense, I'm trying to nuke the ads down as quick as I can. You'll see here, this both of these ads basically place buffs on the boss. Um, so I think it's a block damage and a block, um, might be block debuffs on the boss. Uh, but basically, I am stopping the ads doing that by having block buffs put on the boss anyway, 
just having like general heals, general turn meter control going on. You see, I'm getting turn meter control on the boss whenever I can, whilst putting my damage in on the ads. Uh, once the ads go down, so now I'm going to provoke these ads in so that they're not doing anything I don't want them to do. So always crowd controlling, always turn meter controlling if you've got champions that can do it. If not, then you just got to kind of take the bullet on the damage that's coming at you. But you know, be aware that you're going to want to just take these ads down as quickly as you can. So I'm going to keep my block debuffs up as much of the fight as I can. Turn meter on the boss. Decrease speed on these ads now. And it's really just a sense of, again, like this is probably the easiest one to, to kind of get an auto farm on, but just bide your time, uh, take the ads down, you know, as, as comfortably as you can, making sure you're not taking a bunch of damage off the boss here. Once the ads are down, you're then just going full ham on the boss. So pretty easy one once you've got a team that can do it. Um, but yeah, so he does, yeah, that's fine. Um, I've actually not just thrown that on the boss. So we're going to see the first swing come in. See the way I've got true fear on three of us here. If you land, if the true fear lands on you, do not try and use your main big abilities. It's the worst time you could do it. True fear means that you will lose that ability if you uh, if it goes off and you're not uh, able to deal with it. So true fear is a nasty one. Also, see now we're starting to get freezes on that. I've let him have a turn on me. So 20% chance when attacking him that. Uh, a freeze goes off and it cannot be resisted. So you see now I've I've basically, because I messed up a bit, um, I've basically put myself in trouble now. I've got True Fear on me. I'm not going to do my main ability. I'm just going to go on A1 while that True Fear's there. Try and get back to dealing with his turn meter. But he's feared up. One ad's going down anyway. And I've stopped the buffs coming in from this ad. So we're, we're kind of still fine. Anyway, I'm going to get this down to low health and then we move on to the next one. So here we go. Um, just kind of working him, his way down. I've got to say, I guess if you don't have any sort of heal mechanic for the gold boss, you could be in trouble because it's, it's a pretty lengthy one. But um, yeah, as long as you've got some sort of heal or you know some sort of regen gear on, something like that, and you've got some turn meter manipulation, then you should be absolutely fine for this boss. So that's two down. Let's move on. That's the first time I've done that one. One more crypt completes. Okay, so next one we're going to do is the red boss. Probably the toughest boss, this one. So I'll get us there and I'll show you how this one plays. Okay, so the red boss then. The red boss is, for me, the toughest boss. So he doesn't have any ads. Um, but what he's got is a passive which fills his turn meter for every 1% of HP that he, he loses. So basically, the harder you hit him, the quicker he gets a turn. Um, he has got a remove all debuffs from him, place true fears on the entire enemy team, uh, sorry, on one champion, and then stuns on everyone else. And he gets another turn after this. Basically, what this does is it just gives him like, plenty of additional turns over you unless you can get block debuffs up on yourself uh, or or run with high resistance he is going to uh fear you stun you and then have another full turn and he's smacking you in between so he's really tough to deal with you do need block debuffs up or you need to control his turn meter so that he's not laying it out there as often as he can or you throw up high resistance teams like 230 240 resistance plus to deal with him um his main ability ignores defense as well. So his A1 ignores defense. Even if you're running with defensive champions, you've got to go high HP here. High HP, uh, ideally someone with a shield set on your team uh, will help. But um, And you probably want to run a reviver as well because he just does a ton of damage to your champs. Uh, turn me to control. Someone like Allure here again. I mean, she's just like MVP of any boss fight really. But uh, you can see there... Dropping his turn meter down like we've just done is huge. But basically, he is... Um, you you kind of want to control your damage. You don't want to do too much damage output. Like, I've done too much there, which means I've just got caught. I've got my whole team stunned. I've got a Lord getting half hit. Um, luckily, I mean, she's actually just got feared up as well. So I'm probably going to lose a Lore now. If I didn't have a Resurrect Champion, a Lore would be straight like down, and that would be failed run. So luckily I've got a Duchess in this team, but shows even on boss 14 here, 
just how strong this guy is. Um, as I say, for me, hardest one to fight because he's just constantly filling that turn meter bar up. But you want to go high HP, high resistance, or block debuffs. Plenty of turn meter control if you can do it. Um, and either strong heal champs or shield champs uh, or revive champs to get through this one. Really, really tough boss. Okay, then on to the green boss. Now, the green boss is nasty in that he just puts loads of tick damage on you. So, uh, actually, on the team that I'm running here with a Doom Priest, we're kind of fine with tick damage because I just cleanse it off. But for most um, for most people that are going to be playing this game, you've basically got 5% uh, poison debuff on the target for three turns with his A1, and he drops your turn meter. He's got AoE, True Fear, um, for one turn, also 5% five, uh, 5 poisons for three turns and drops turn meter of all enemies on his A2. So that's a massive ability. Knocks all your turn meters down, um, puts true, bit, true fear on one and poisons on others. So massive ability, this one. So if you've got, again, block debuffs, you see there's such a, a common trend here. Block debuffs, high resistance um, to be able to kind of get through these things is massive or a cleanse uh, and then he's got a passive uh places hp burn on for one turn on an attacker when hit which again is kind of nasty for this one you don't really need to kill the ads if you can control the ads so if you can cc these ads like i've done here two stuns all i'm going to do now is actually just go on the boss he doesn't have any way of cleaning off debuffs so lay your debuffs up as early as you can and pretty much just lay all your damage onto the boss, uh, leaving the adds. You want to kill this boss as quickly as you can, otherwise the the um, the ticks and stuff are just going to nuke you down. So plenty of poison damage. Poison won't cause you to to take damage. So poison's a good one here. Turn meter control as ever is strong because you're not going to be um, taking as many hits. And then you see here I've got high resistance champion. So basically. His, his whack from his A1 did not land on me because I've pulled her resistance above a couple of hundred. So the adds are annoying in a sense of this ad here is going to put block um, block damage out and um, this one I think does a, a heal. But yeah, pretty much you just want to wail on the boss as quickly as you can and cleanse your champions as much as possible for the green boss. Um, this one I think is... It's, it's almost like bring in as much damage as you can. Like just, just take him down as quickly as you can if you've got the champs to do that. And uh, hopefully you won't or, or bring the cleansers in basically. But yeah, not, not the toughest one out there, but um, just fiddly really. Just need to make sure that you can deal with debuffs. Okay, then the final one to cover. I've only got it on a level seven here, so I can't show you any kind of like crazy big fights. But I'll talk you through him. Um, this one is an interesting one. So he's got two adds. Um, basically, he can attack with those two adds. Um, places block damage on himself if all allies are dead. So kind of what you want to do here is um, he's also got revives all dead allies with full HP, places a sleep on, uh, on himself. And then he's got attack all enemies and a chance to place fear. So, so not so much going on in terms of debuffing here. Um, the best thing you can do here is basically get either control the ads in terms of like crowd control. So he's not coming at you with all of his ads. So a good one here would be to perhaps I'll do it with, with one of these guys. Hopefully I don't do too much damage. So I can provoke these ads. Can I get away without killing him? We'll see. Uh, provoke the ads and do that provoke again. So we're not taking any more damage. Heal myself. We should see this here. So he's going to do his ability with his team ally attack. But because they're provoked, we don't get that full kind of ally attack going on. So actually, um, I can't believe I just actually lost someone there. <laughs> but yeah, basically it, it nullified his, his ally attack because I've got crowd control on them. So stuns, freezes, provokes, all that type of good stuff will stop the ads attacking with him. Um, Revives all dead allies with full HP, places a sleep on himself. So you kind of want to keep one ad dead. He'll revive one ad, sleep himself. You don't really want to kill both ads. There's no real need. 
Um, and then this one here, just an AOE, 40% chance of placing like a, a basic fear. For me, probably the easiest boss to deal with, the blue one. Um, just bring some control for the ads, bring some healing for your team, and uh, you should be able to take this one down relatively easy. So guys, that is all of the bosses done. Um, mainly, it's make sure you bring champions in that can heal, cleanse, revive, um, and you'll be able to deal with these bosses. But all of them got their own kind of slightly weird mechanics, so you just have to deal with them all one by one. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys. I've been Hell Hades. I'll catch you later.